Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the BaileyWiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. We also make modular systems and scenes that you can use without any setup. Today, we're doing a special episode of our Transitioning from Roll20 to Foundry VTT series. By popular demand, I'm going to be going through all of the modules that we feature within the series. This video is meant to just give you a general overview of all of these modules, so see our other tutorials for more information on how to use them in detail. If you want to look at these modules or the other modules that we recommend and use, you can go ahead and take a look at the brand new Bailey Wiki Wiki at the link on screen now. It'll also be down in the description, or you can just remember wiki.bailey.wiki. We have a page dedicated to our favorite modules. And from that page, you can go view individual pages for specific modules. We're just getting started with this project. So if you're passionate about Foundry VTT, grab a module and write a page. As we count down the different modules that we've used, we're going to be breaking them up into different categories with timestamps in the description. So check there if you want to jump to a specific module. Now with all of that out of the way, let's dive right in. The first category of modules is Libraries and Dependencies. These are the modules that are required to make the rest of the list work. If you want to know more about which specific library or dependency a module has, see its individual module page. The first category of libraries are LibWrapper, SocketLib, and LibColorSettings. These are exclusively leveraged by their modules, and you won't have to worry about them as a GM. The next category, Module Utilities, is also mostly going to be used by other modules. However, you can create macros using Sequencer and WarpGate, and you can use Scene Packer in order to preserve data between scenes when you put them into compendiums. Getting into basics are the Quality of Life and Organization modules. The very first module is Find the Culprit, which should also be the first module that you install on Foundry VTT. It makes troubleshooting module conflicts a breeze by automatically trimming down what has conflicts and what doesn't. Next, we have Tidy UI. This has a variety of features to improve the look and feel of the different settings menus, particularly checking and unchecking modules and importing and exporting module lists that you can use to activate or deactivate different groups of modules that you have installed. These module lists make it easy to share your loadouts with other people, and importing a list will only activate things, not install them. Compendium folders is essential for organizing your compendiums into multiple subfolders, and also keeping the interior of your compendiums organized, like we've done with the BaileyWiki modules. It's easy to find things categorically, and you can bring in entire folder structures into your world. Dice tray is a must-have for being able to roll. Simply click the buttons in order to add the appropriate chat roll script, instead of having to type it out manually. Monk's scene navigation is exactly how scenes should work in Core Foundry. Left-clicking on a scene in your scenes directory will now navigate you there rather than opening configuration, and navigable scenes will be collapsed into folders for easier organization and less clutter at the top of your screen. The devil is in the details, and Monk covers all of them in his little details. Automatically calculating challenge rating, adding intuitive names behind conditions rather than having to guess at the artwork, updating the hidden frame, rearranging the order of settings, Numerous other tweaks and features, such as adding sound bites to character sheets for easy reference or roars, a helpful addition to the scene configuration menu in the form of all of the major colors present on a scene, a helpful turn indicator for your players, and so much more that we've even forgotten everything that it does. Monk's Token Bar is another excellent addition to Monk's arsenal of modules. It allows you to quickly find different actors, as well as initiate things such as role requests, and more. It's very helpful for keeping track of a lot of players on a very large or complex scene, particularly those that take advantage of levels and elevation. Pointer and pings is key for communication. When we're looking at a group of goblins, it's important to know which goblin we're pointing at or which one we're going to focus on or pay attention to. This helps solve that issue. Easy target makes targeting much easier. Simply hold down a keyboard shortcut, such as Alt by default, when you click on a token, and you will be able to target rather than select, and you don't have to switch tools or open up token context menus to do so. Quick Encounters is a great tool for prepping your games. 
It creates journal entries that store the locations and number of actors that you want to have in a combat encounter. Then when you activate the journal entry, it populates those actors rather than you cluttering up the screen with them being hidden. For DMs, Token Action HUD is a minimalist set of tools that allow you to perform all of the actions for your selected token without having to open up the character sheet and clutter up your screen. Roll saves, make attacks, use features, spells, and inventory items, all without having to open and clutter up your screen with all of those goblins you have. 5e users also have the option of Argon Combat HUD, a flashier alternative that includes a lot of great 5e quality of life features, such as spell tooltips, action economy items, and standard actions such as ready, dash, and hide. We like giving our players Argon, while we use the more minimalist token action HUD for our monsters. Next up are scene building modules that you can use to elevate your maps. First off, we have the levels trifecta of wall height, better roofs, and levels. These allow us to add heights and bottoms to all of the assets on the scene, from tiles to walls, sounds, and lights. It also allows us to expand the capabilities of the roof feature in Core Foundry, and then tie all of this together to create multiple levels for truly vertical map building and exploration. It's a really great way to add verticality and interest to your game. We've done a lot of videos on levels and its whole suite, so check out that series in the link on screen now. For fast and powerful map making right within Foundry, nothing quite beats Dungeon Draw. Draw just like you're using the drawing tool to create a dungeon layout that includes walls and textures. Themes can be customized to suit your needs, and you can use this to connect other areas of your maps. If you prefer to have something generated for you, you can clear the canvas, and then you can use the Dungeon Generation Wizard to generate a layout that you can further adjust or run right out of the box. DF Architect is a particularly potent tool for fine tuning your scenes. You can toggle on the visibility of things like walls and lights to be seen within other layers so you can finally adjust where your tiles are in relation to your walls and lighting, etc. Additionally, if you want to very precisely place a light by holding the Shift key like in regular Foundry, DF Architect adds helpful crosshairs that you can use to have exacting placement. If you're looking for better ways to access your content, then look no further than Molinet. Molinet is a suite of modules that indexes all of your current content within your world and provides a more intuitive asset browsing experience. Molinet also offers cloud storage for its patrons, allowing you to either store your own assets on the cloud or grab specific assets from module authors that you already support on Patreon. Grab scenes, tiles, prefabs, and more when you need them and only when you need them, so that they're not taking up precious asset space on your server. Multiface Tiles is a simple and powerful module that allows you to have multiple tile images assigned to a tile. We use it here for switching roofs. Token Attacher is an incredibly powerful scene building module, and if you've been around, you know exactly why we love it. You can attach just about anything to a token, and here we've used it to construct entire buildings that can be dragged and dropped right from your actors directory. If you want to learn more about Token Attacher, you can check out our series of videos at the link on screen. It's the number one way to improve your scene building. Our final scene building module is 3D Canvas. It's a mad science project from Ripper, the same mind behind levels and better roofs. This adds a fully functioning 3D canvas to Foundry VTT that you can use for minis, combat, and more, all while keeping the best VTT on the market at your fingertips. Our next category is Special Effects. First up is Dice So Nice, an absolute classic for a reason. This adds 3D dice rolling into Foundry. It also comes complete with heavy customization for each individual user to express themselves and the characters that they're playing. Just about every aspect of the dice can be customized to really showcase your creativity and personal style. Simple, classic, effective. Ambient Doors adds a variety of sounds to opening, closing, locking, and unlocking doors to really make those thresholds feel alive. If you're looking to up the atmosphere of your games, then look no further than FX Master. This is what we use to add all of the weather to our scenes, such as the clouds you see on screen, or rain, snow, and more. There's a variety of different weather effects, including some animal images to have circling ravens or fluttering doves, etc. 
You can also dive into the filter side of things if you want to add some other effects. Lightning is an incredible effect when you're trying to do a storm, or you can give your party a look through the predator's eyes. All of it comes with a radical amount of customization and flexibility. Next we have Tile Scroll. This allows tiles to overlap or play over each other as if they are animated. There are options for side scrolling, like this mineshaft here, and rotational scrolling, such as this merry-go-round. There's a lot of different possibilities with Tile Scroll, and it's a new module to Foundry version 10. Prior to version 10, you'll need to use Parallaxia, which has similar functionalities, but is no longer supported in Foundry VTT version 10. Next we have JB2A, another classic module from a bunch of wonderful artists that create animated assets. These come as 5e actors to represent different spell effects or summons, but you can also use these as tiles and effects. One of the easiest ways to add style and panache to your spellcasting is token magic effects. No longer will you place a boring measure template, instead you'll really bring the heat with an automatically applied filter effect based upon the damage type of the spell. You can also manually apply similar filters to any kind of asset on the canvas, from tokens to drawings to tiles. These macros are incredibly powerful and you can customize and create your own to have all sorts of unique and impressive effects to really bring some atmosphere and style to your games. Automated animations rounds out spellcasting by using Sequencer and JB2A assets in order to fire different bolts of animation at your opponents when you're doing ranged spellcasting. Our final category of modules is automation, things to make your game smarter. Automating things like exploding barrels with a simple click has never been easier than with Monk's active tile triggers and tagger. These take the guesswork out of macros or complicated scripting, and instead use an intuitive system of actions and triggers on a tile to achieve the effects that you want. There are so many possibilities with Monk's active tile triggers. So if you want to check out our ever-growing playlist as we automate Foundry using MATC and Tagger, you can check out the series on screen now. Simple Calendar introduces the game time to the game. This allows you to track days, weeks, months, seasons, and more, and you can specify and customize all of it very powerfully. About Time and Time's Up are two sides of the same coin. About Time requires Simple Calendar, and it cares about effects that end based upon days or longer. About Time and Time's Up are two sides of the same coin. About Time requires Simple Calendar, and helps to manage effects that last based upon a certain length of time, such as days or weeks. Time's Up uses a similar process, however it does not require Simple Calendar, and instead cares about things that are closer to minutes or seconds, for managing effects that only last for a few rounds of combat, or maybe one encounter. These are used heavily by other modules and their automation. Next, we have Active Token Effects. Unfortunately, this has not been updated for Foundry version 10 as of today. These remaining automation modules are all exclusive to D&D 5e, and first is Active Auras, that will apply auras and other effects to other surrounding tokens as the emanating token moves around. No longer do you have to manually apply and remove buffs as the Paladin waltzes throughout the battlefield, and many other modules use this to automate their own pieces. MIDI Quality of Life is the automation suite for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. It handles just about every aspect of rolling, from attacks to saves to damage and more. It is incredibly customizable, so much so that you might get lost, but Tim Posney, the author of MIDI Qual, has graciously added these quick settings to the workflow to give you a starting point to work from, from full automation to minimal automation and every flavor in between. You can get started quickly and easily and tweak to your own desires afterwards. If you'd like to learn more, you can view our series with Tim here. Dynamic Active Effects, or DAE, is also by Tim and expands the Foundry's core active effects possibilities in order to further automate 5e effects. MidiQual and DAE both have SRD modules that take content that are within the 5e SRD that would have these special effects and goes ahead and recreates them. This way you can bring in a Cloak of the Manta Ray that actually automatically updates your swim speed and more. Unfortunately, the DAE and MIDI Qual SRDs have not been updated yet for version 10, however, we're optimistic that they will be updated very soon. 
When available, the SRDs are a great place to start if you're looking for examples on how to construct different items or abilities with their special effects. It's a really good tool to use when you're learning the different aspects of DAE and MIDI QOL. Managing conditions in 5e can be a real chore. It's very easy to forget what all of the conditions do and how they affect things. Defred's Convenient Effects takes care of that for you. Not only does it have nice color-coded icons, but it also automatically applies the appropriate effects to each condition, such as disadvantage on attacks. Magic Items is the easiest way you've ever seen to create a wand of fireballs. Simply open up the Magic Item tab, add your charges, and specify whatever else you want about the item, and then, if you want it to cast a spell, you simply drag and drop that spell directly onto the item. And boom, you have a Magic Item ready to go quickly and easily. Link Item and Resource D&D 5e allows you to connect an item or feature's activations to a resource on a character sheet useful for keeping them handier in combat and on the character sheet. Item Macro allows you to store and execute macros off of an item. This is particularly useful for other automated content import and other advanced setups. You can also use this if you have particular special effects that you want to be bringing in every time a weapon is swung or an item is used. Our final module is the D&D Beyond Importer from Mr. Primate. You can use this to bring in characters from D&D Beyond. Simply paste in a character link and start the import process. After that, it will automatically bring in and sync all of the data from D&D Beyond. Patron members of Mr. Primates can use the D&D Beyond importer to sync back with D&D Beyond, import adventures, monsters, and more. To get the most out of the D&D Beyond importer, you want to make sure that you have all of these modules we've already listed installed. Magic Items, Dynamic Active Effects, Link Item and Resource, Defred's Community Effects, MIDI QOL, About Time and Dependency, Simple Calendar, Time's Up, Advanced Macros, Active Auras, Token Magic Effects, Automated Animations, and if you're on V9, Active Token Effects. That's everything you need to bring in all of the smart components with D&D Beyond Importer. It's a really powerful tool, particularly with all of these automation modules behind it, to make those imports even smarter. That's going to wrap up our review of all of the modules that we featured throughout the switching from Roll20 to Foundry VTT series with Vox. Let us know if you have any questions about these modules, or if there's another module that you think we should really check out and take a look at. Don't forget to stop by the new BaileyWiki wiki to review all of the modules here and learn more about them. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content and consider becoming a patron. Not only do you support the channel, but you'll also gain access to all of the modular systems and scenes that we've made, including many of the scenes featured in this video. Once again, this has been Zephyr for the BaileyWiki channel. Thank you so much for watching, happy gaming, and have a good one.